So Shabbat Shalom everyone. We are back again with a new parasha. Today we will speak about the parasha Kora and also with the, the rebellion. So I hope you have read the parasha. You have spoken about the parasha and uh, it's very important to understand that our life, first of all, we should understand that uh, when we read the parasha, it's not about others, it's about ourselves. Our journey started with our birth. This is our journey. It doesn't matter if we are born in a Catholic family, if we are born in a Christian family, if we are born in a Hindu family, whatever. But our journey starts with our birth. And it goes on until the Almighty decided our journey is finished. During this time, we have many choices to make. Unfortunately, many of us do not understand what is the way of life. And if, uh, if Elohim has brought us back to his Torah, which is a word of truth, we should take time to scrutinize our own life, not the life of others, but our own life. Because here the purpose is in the Torah, as we're going to see, is to change ourselves, work on our middle character tree and to remove all kind of uh, of uh, bad habits called bad habits clipot which uh, are which we have accumulated in our life from our youth and uh, we should understand that uh, it is very important yeah so we should understand that we need to work on it and it's not so easy because uh, the best way is to to hide ourselves we don't want to look in the mirror and to see all our shortcomings we prefer to imagine that we are okay with ourselves okay and uh, many times it causes trouble we are the source of our trouble and Elohim is patient with us because today we have an advocate in the heavens. This is Yeshua, our Adon, our master. Before it was not so, it was Moshe. Moshe was there for the people. They could see him. They could see him and choose what they, what they do to follow like uh, we have seen in the from Parasha with Caleb and Yehoshua, the son of Nun, or to rebel. And today we see in the Parasha Korah a rebellion. A rebellion which is based on uh, jealousy. Jealousy and the uh, feeling that uh, these uh, people were. Uh, the equal to Moshe. They were the equal to Moshe. Moshe, we should remember, was the redeemer of the house of Israel, the old chin of Israel. He was a redeemer physically. And he's the one, by the power of Elohim, who brought them out from Mitzrayim, Egypt, the house of bondage, to bring them into the promised land. This land was promised to Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. But as we see, during these 40 years, there was a lot of trouble for Moshe, and he had to bear the burden of all the people. He was a real redeemer, because he never moved. He never moved. He kept going, trusting, trusting Jehovah. And so we should be also. We are the leader in our own life, no others. 
No, we are the leader in our own house. I repeat it, because this is what we have to understand. We are many in the body of Mashiach. We are many. We are all, as far as we believe for others, we are called into the kingdom of Elohim. And no one is superior. We are one master. His name is Yehoshua. We are all brothers and sisters. And we should regard one another with a lot of respect. This was not the case here in the Parashat Korah. In the Parashat Korah, there was uh, people who have uh, bad intention because they were jealous of Moshe and they accused him. They go so far that uh, uh, we see the Rubenites, Datan and Abiram, told Moshe that and compare Mitzrayim, Egypt, as a land flowing with milk and honey. They want to go back. They want to go back and so we have to understand. So they accuse Moshe to have take control over them. But we should remember that we start with the book of Shemot that uh, Moshe never never forced anything to be a leader. He didn't want. He even refused when Elohim called him. He tried to find excuse not to be the one in charge. Remember, he said, look, I am somebody of, uh, I have poor lips. I cannot speak properly. It is Elohim who forced him. He wanted to him to be because Elohim knew the heart of Moshe. He has never made his own decision. He was patient, and even, as we have seen in the last parasha, he endures the 40 years in the wilderness, not because of his own mistake, because of the mistake of the children of Israel. Not even the ten, the ten who rebelled during their tour in Canaan. Ten people, ten people, but... Uh, brought a bad report, consequences, 40 days in uh, Canaan, 40 years in the wilderness. So many were affected by that. We should learn, we should learn that uh, we must be careful in what we are doing, in what we are speaking to one way or another. Here we speak about leadership, yes? Uh, they told Moshe <clears throat> that everyone, every one of them in the camp, everyone, all the children of Israel are kadosh, are set apart, are the saints of Elohim. Yes, it's true. But nevertheless, Elohim has put Moshe as a head. And that this is also that we have to understand. So Moshe was entrusted with the Torah of Elohim. He didn't make his own Torah. This was given to him face to face by Elohim. And so we need also to learn in our daily life that we also, we have a master. We have a master in the name of Yeshua. And we should do what he says. We should follow him and imitate him in the way to walk the Torah. If you read carefully the Brit Hadasha, especially the four, uh, the, the four gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Yohanan, we will see that uh, Yehoshua never replied to a bad words. He kept his mouth. He kept his mouth and he followed because he knew his call. And if we know, know our call, we will do the same. We will imitate our master, our Adon, Yehoshua. And this is very important. And we see that in his parasha, that after the rebellion, the consequence was terrible. That people die. They die because of the rebellion. They wanted to have a proof. Moshe told them, Listen, if I am the one who make up all this story, 
nothing will happen. But if if Yehovah makes something supernatural, and he say what he will do, that he open the earth to swallow the the wicked, the rebellious, then you will see that it is uh, Elohim who has chosen me. And so it happened. People die. And after that, we see that the next day, many from the children of Israel came to Moshe to accuse him again. And the consequence was terrible because thousands of people died because of this rebellion. This is not a story. This is an attitude. And this happened today in many ways. Or you will say, oh, okay, but we don't see people dying. No, no, you don't see people dying. They're already dead. They're already dead because they refuse to walk with Elohim. They refuse because they're upset at this one. They're upset at this one. They're upset at this leader. But we have learned that. We have learned that, that we should be wise in our choice. And if we are not wise, we will suffer the consequence of our choice. Dying today is also a spiritual, a spiritual way. When Mashiach came in the first century, Shaul, Paul, explained us that there is a change. He explained that in the first Corinthians 15, if you read it, he said that the first Adam was of the flesh. The second Adam was a life-giving spirit. This means we are regenerated when we walk in a way that pleases Elohim. And we should uh, ponder about that and look at our action, not others, our action. Every day we should make an introspection before we go to sleep and to confess if we have done something which is not in the way Elohim has planned it for us, we should confess and say, Father, forgive me for whatever sin I have done before thee today. You see, and remain humble. Remember Yeshua said in Matthew uh, 23, 12, he said, whoever exalted himself shall be humble, and whoever humble himself shall be exalted. We don't need to exalt ourselves it is a work of Elohim. Elohim will make a way if he has planned something for us. Otherwise, we should remain humble. And humility is not something that we fake. Humility is really a part of the nature of the Mashiach. So if we want to imitate our master, we must pray. Pray to our Father in heaven that he remove from us boasting and pride and give us the spirit of humility and servanthood. We pray until we see the change in our life. Not one time, not two times, but again and again, again and again, until we see the real change in our life. We have confrontation with people because we are not on the same level. There is no question to be superior to another. It is just a question to understand that in our walk, some started 20 years, 25 years ago, some started three years, five years ago, so we cannot be on the same level. This does not mean that we are superior. Nobody is superior. Nobody. It's just a question of understanding. Because the Torah is a tree of life, and we need to grow. And in the beginning, we receive the milk until we are able to absorb the meat. And when you absorb the meat, it is a great understanding. Again, it has nothing to do to make somebody superior or not. We have no other way. We have one master. And we should never forget. When we see people, it is a new challenge for us. We have to understand that uh, every time we meet somebody, it is the will of Elohim for us in order that we grow. Every challenge we face is an opportunity for us to grow. Every challenge for uh, Shaul say, 
everything works for good to those who love Elohim. So whatever situation, there is no random, uh, random uh, situation happening in our life. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose in our life. We need just to understand what is going on and not to rebel. We see that uh, Moshe decided to put the, the roots, the, the roots of every one of the tribes, the head of the tribes, and the road of Aaron to make a choice to show them something. And we see that it was the road of Aaron who budded and even brought fruits, almonds. So we need to understand that, that Aaron was a chosen one. He was chosen by Elohim. Remember when Moshe uh, leave, uh, left Midian, it is Aaron who came to meet him in, the, in, the, in his way back to uh, Mitzrayim. And so we see again, here we have somebody, Aaron, who is chosen by Elohim in the position of the high priest. We never see Moshe acting as a high priest. We see Moshe as a redeemer. We see Moshe as a leader. But we see Aaron as a high priest. Now, the high priest is after the order of Levi, as we know. And our master, our Adon Yehoshua, is priest after the order of Mekitzedek. So you will say, oh, it is not the same. You know, it's not the same. The sages of old say that uh, Mekitzedek was Shem, one of the sons of uh, Noah. Shem was who met uh, Abraham. So what is the purpose? There is a shift. We need to explain. Today, because of the expiation of sin, need the mediator. The mediator is uh, in uh, Israel, in the, is, uh, the, the high priest, the Kohen Haggadol. He is the one with the instrument for the expiation of sin, as we see in Yom Kippur. And this is very important to understand. Since the uh, 70 AD, there is no more temple. So the office of uh, the, the Kohen is no more, has been suspended until the time will come back for the third temple. Until then, there is no temple. So now, in the heavens, we have another priesthood, which is after the whole of Melchizedek. So Yeshua is our mediator. He is in the same position like Moshe. He is the one who intercedes before Elohim in case we fell short because Elohim loves us and he, he wants us to progress in our life. When Mashiach come back, maybe soon in our days, and for this we pray, then he will come and he will be enthroned as the king of all the earth. And he will receive the scepter. Remember, if you go to Bereshit chapter 49, when Yaakov gave the blessing to all his uh, children before he died, the scepter and authority came upon Yehuda. So Yehoshua, our Adon, is from the tribe of Yehuda, and the scepter of authority will return to his hand when he comes back. So, but the the Kohen will get back their position to make the service in the temple. So, we will have back the service of the Levites. The Levites will serve again Elohim and Yehoshua will be king of all the earth. And Yehoshua has never chose his position. Like Moshe, like Moshe, he received the position, it is written, 
if we read in the book of uh, Philippians, if I don't, in the book of Philippians, it's written, why does he receive this position? Because of his obedience. His obedience even unto death. Even unto death. It was not before that he received the authority. The offering of Yeshua. He offers his life for you and me. Moshe offered his life for the children of Israel. He never lived for himself. Remember, he didn't want to be recognized as one of the Pharaoh's daughter son, but he went to Midian because he wanted to be part of these people, the Hebrew. You see, we can see the parallel and we want to understand that it is very important for us to acknowledge that Yeshua is our Adon and to live before our Adon, not from Shabbat to Shabbat, but every day when we get up to set ourselves ready for the day, to walk in the mind with a right spirit, to say, Father, thank you for this day, help me today, to walk this way, to honor thee with all my life. And in the evening, before I go to sleep, to make a, yeah, to, to introspect our life and to see if there is something I have to, to bring to my Father. If I train myself in this way, then my life will become more clear and clear. The light will shine more and more. And this is what we have to do. So, if you want to know more, you can go to my blog. You can read about the Parasha Korah, or I go into details. But the mystery of a human being is our life. Our life is uh, in the duality between the flesh and the Ruach. The, the spirit man, which is in, in ourselves, the spirit man, want to follow Jehovah, but the flesh want to walk its own way. This is why uh, Shaul, Paul says, walk in the Ruach spirit and you will not fulfill the desire of the flesh. The desire of the flesh are enmity against Elohim. And those who fulfill the desire of the flesh cannot please Elohim, cannot please. Because Elohim is Roi, is spirit, and is seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth. The truth. The truth yeah. yeah. So we have to understand. So I encourage you to walk in the spirit, to seek Jehovah with all your heart and with all your mind, to set yourself straight before Elohim no matter what come, because at the end, we have the victory. We will not, it's not we will have, we have already the victory. We just need to stand and to encourage one another to have a, a good life, a good life according to the standard of the Torah, not according to the standard of the world. The world passed away, but the word of Jehovah remained forever. So I wish you... You, you uh, can continue. It's Shabbat. But we have a question. question. Yeah, if you have a question, you give a question and we'll answer. Korah. Yeah. So Korah was um the leader, right? One of the leaders who get uh, jealous with the uh, jealousy. He was, he was the leader. Yeah, he was a high official of Elohim. He was yeah, a high was, official of Elohim. The, but he, uh, he was in charge also of the tabernacle, but he was not happy with his position. So See, the, and that the, is already uh, a wrong way. Contentment. We have to learn what well, is We learn in the Brei Hadasha, be happy with what you have. Don't look for other things. Moment may come that Elohim is able to change our, our life, bring people across our ways when we don't imagine. But if we are stubborn and disobedient, it will never happen. Mm -hmm. We will draw the opposite because we are the one who construct our life in our mind. We construct our life, we build our life in our mind and by our words. This is why we have to set uh, uh, our hands before the mouth. Remember, proverb it is written, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, 
Speak life and no death. Speak life. Speak blessing to others. You want to see blessing? Speak blessing to others. If you have a sentiment against somebody, forgive. Forgive. Sincerely. Do not hold. Because if you hold so, it, you, you hold yourself. So we need to learn this process and we, we need to be watchful. Watchful about our deeds, what we are doing. Every day, every single day. This is our life. And we need to understand that we, this life is not to be played or the, to have fun. No, we don't live a life of fun. We live a life of consecration. We live a life to be set apart. And the joy that we have, it doesn't come from men. It comes from above. It comes from, from Elohim himself. When your heart is overwhelmed with the presence of Elohim, then we, we test, we taste the beginning of the joy of the Olam Abba. That's it, just a little taste. And we need to endure. We need to keep going and to have our focus set on Yeshua and on Elohim. And not to look that we are in competition with, we are not in competition with anybody. In this world, you have many, many so-called believers, so-called believers, who have taken position for themselves. They have taken the position. They have never asked, never asked if they have the position. They have taken the position for themselves. If you want to battle with them, you are on the wrong side because they will have always an answer. They will have always an answer. We don't have to battle. We have to look at our own position as a father. My life is in your hands. Whatever you want to do, you do it. You do it. And if Elohim has something, he will do it. But many will be disappointed because they have taken a take position for themselves and they are not able to assume their position. They put people in bondage by the false doctrine with their words with accusation against other assembly, and so on, and so on. So, we should be wise. If I am in such an assembly, it is toxic. Toxic for my life. And I will not stay in a place where it is toxic. I will remove myself. I prefer to keep a Shabbat in my house, learning the Torah, praying, praising Elohim, than to go in an assembly, just to, to say, oh, yes, hello, hello, oh, brother, oh, hello, hello. No, that's not something, it's nothing. Or the truth here, some elders, or some leaders speaking badly upon others and saying, boasting themselves, boasting themselves. Read the Parashakura. And you will see if it is the right things to boast. You see? So, my brother and sister, I insist on the point if we are in an assembly that try to lift up itself above all the assembly, saying that they are better because they do this way, because they speak the name this way, because they do that, because they, they, they baptize, and so on, and so on. And there are many, many excuses. Because they have the right calendar, because they do that better than the others then we are in the wrong place. We need to live. We need to live and to pray, to pray Elohim, to send people across our ways, will help us to grow, to grow in the perfect knowledge of His will. And I can assure you, it works. It works. It just takes patience. Patience. The right assembly might not be near your door. But there is an assembly, and Elohim is able to bring people across your ways. So be patient with yourself, and just be happy with your position. There is no low position and high position, but the position given to you by Elohim. Responsibility okay? is so high. And yeah, further, when we, when we grow, when we are established by Elohim, then we have more responsibility. 
And we should know what we are doing with this responsibility. We stand for truth, but we have no control, we have no authority of a people. The flock belongs to Yahushua. He is the one who paid the price, not ourselves. Unfortunately, again, in many assemblies, they boast themselves and think that the people belong to them. Like an object, they never serve as an intention to serve Elohim. They serve themselves, their own glory. So be careful with this position. Do you have any question? I don't have any question. So anyway, as I say, you can go to my blog. We will put in the the link and uh, read the parasha. No, we can Quran. discuss if you want. And uh, no, uh, so I wish you a, a good week. Shavua Tov. A good month. We just started the, the fourth month. And uh, we should need an introspect to, to introspect ourselves. To know what is the purpose of my life. What I am doing here. And be honest with ourselves. If we have in the past fell short because we have been moving with all the people in an assembly, we should just ask Elohim to forgive us. Remember, Yohanan explained, and in first Yohanan, he explained that uh, if anyone sin, he should confess his sin, and Elohim is good to forgive us and to cleanse us from every unrighteousness. So we don't have to worry about that, to trust Elohim, because Elohim loves his people. He loves his creation. So we need to understand that. Okay? So, be blessed, and see you in the next parasha. Or in next video. Shalom everyone. Be blessed. Shalom.